the flesh. This week, prisoner of war. Hey, Brady! Ed Brady! Coming, coming! Step on it, will you? And why all the excitement? Excitement? You work for the United Press, don't you? No, I work for the United Press. Go on. This is straight from the old man. Big doings up near Shoma Suman. No kidding. Well, what are we waiting for? That's our most advanced outpost. You know, it might be risky. Come on. Right behind you, boy. Right behind you. Well, baby, this is where we get out. We're an open target in this jeep. Okay. Now, where is that story? Look out! Look out, Germans! Hit the ditch! Okay! You all right? I'm hit. Hey, where? It's my leg. Don't think it hit the bone, though. Germans, here they come. Beat it. You're okay. Beat it, will you? Nothing doing, buddy. Cigarette? Okay, thanks. This is a date I won't forget. September 12th, 1944. You and me both. It's it. You're yeah. my prisoners. I'm a war correspondent. This man's hit. Sergeant. Uh, yeah, Herr Hauptmann. Take care of this man. Uh, Super failure, Herr Hauptmann. What is your name? Beatty. Edward Beatty, United Press. Aha, uh-huh. war correspondent, huh? You'll come with me. Good luck, John. And thanks for the big story. Yeah. Sorry it worked out like this. See you in Berlin, Beatty. Hurry now. We haven't got all day. I have communicated your capture to Berlin, Mr. Beatty. They want to see you badly. Well, what's holding us? We've been in this dugout for days. Yes, your troops have us surrounded southwest of Epinal on the western approaches to the Vogesen. That's fine. Let's stay then. I like this Vogesen mountain air. The scenery around Epinal isn't bad at all. My men will fight it out to the death. You, Mr. Beatty, have an appointment in Berlin. We leave tonight. told us... Told you what? They told us Berlin was practically untouched. Look about you. Yeah. Not a pretty sight, is it? You can scarcely recognize even the Unterden Linden. Not like it was before the war, is it? The beautiful Unterden Linden. Now it's a mass of rubble. You still think you Germans have a chance? We are victims of our leadership. You and your fellow officers sang a different tune last November. But this is January 1945, Mr. Beatty. Then you admit Germany's cause is lost. I did not say that. Quiet. This is where you go. Who are we calling on this time? Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. You'll find out. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. You Germans don't sound very enthusiastic, Captain. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Quiet. We go in here. Huh? Says Dr. Paul Schmidt, head of press section. Quiet. Herr Doctor, Mr. Edward Beatty of the United Press, prisoner of war. Come in, Mr. Beatty. Come in. Wait outside there, Hoffman. Well, Herr Doctor. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Sit down, Mr. Beatty. I'll stand, if you don't mind. As you wish. Now, I will get to the point. Fuhrer has authorized me to pay you well to broadcast and write for us. <laughs> Listen, Doctor, I've been approached on that matter ever since my capture last September. I know, I know, but... But you forget that I already have an employer, the United Press. You forget, Mr. Beatty, that you are a prisoner of war. We Germans have dealt lenient with you for five months. Surely you must realize there are ways in which we can, shall we say, persuade you? Not from the way the war is going for you, Germans. My answer's the same. I have no information to offer. Other than what the regulations require, my name and serial number. The war is far from over, Mr. Beatty. This is January 1945. Your country, battered by air and land, is waging a hopeless three-front war. Well, perhaps we cannot drive the Anglo-Americans out of France. But they will never penetrate the fatherland. When the spring thaw comes, they will launch a mighty offensive against the Russians and roll up their last-ditch armies. You haven't stopped them yet. But assuming you did, what will the Americans be doing in the meanwhile? Once we crush the Russians, we will force England and America into a compromised peace. Now, don't you see why it is to your advantage to write for us? Any more questions, Dr. Schmidt? No. None for the present. 
Maybe you will change your mind. We Germans have a place for men like you who refuse to collaborate with the Fatherland. Herr Hauptmann. And where is that? Herr Hauptmann, you have your orders. Interview is over, Mr. Beatty. Where's he taking me? Take me away, Herr Hauptmann. Jawohl, Herr Doktor. This way, Mr. Beatty. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Well, Captain, you should not make the doctor angry. Uh, I suppose not. It is regrettable. Uh, you sound as if we were going to a funeral. It is possible. Worse things have happened at Luckenwald. You mean the Luckenwald horror camp south of Berlin? Horror for some, good for others. It all depends upon your conduct, Mr. Beatty. It all depends on my conduct, eh? Look involved. Look involved. This is the last stop. Did you hear that, Mr. Beatty? I heard it all right. It has been four weeks, Mr. Beatty. Four weeks. Now all you have to do is to join our... <laughs> do you hear that, Mr. Beatty? It uh, could happen to you. All the money and dried sausage in the world won't make me right for you damn Nazis. We will see, Mr. Beatty. We will see. Mr. Beatty, are you awake? Mr. Beatty! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it, Captain? The Russians have broken through on the eastern front. So that's what the noise is about. Yes, all Eastern Germany is in chaos. You're afraid, Captain, afraid. No, we must stop them. We've got to stop them. Not a chance. The Russians will be here any day. Here at Luckenbald. The cannon are getting closer. But we'll stand and fight for the Führer. Well, Commandant. You sent for me? Yeah, there's not much time. The Germans are leaving Luckenwald. What about us prisoners? It is every man for himself now. You're licked, Major, didn't I tell you? You're licked. <laughs> yes. That remains to oh, be seen. Uh, Commandant, uh, there's not much time. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes, they're licked. If only there was some way I could reach the American lines. What a story to tell the world. What a story to tell the world. You're Robert Vermillion, United Press? Yes, sir. You know of a United Press correspondent, Edward Beatty? Yes, sir. He was taken by the Germans last September. Well, our men have located Beatty in the German prison camp at Luckenwald. Luckenwald? Yes. The Russians have captured the camp. My orders are to furnish you with a jeep to ride from our western front to Luckenwald. You are to bring Beatty back to our American 9th Army line. Oh, boy, what a relief. We were kind of afraid. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. Better get ready. It's a five-hour drive. Is he, is he really all right? Yes, Germans tried to bribe him to write for them, but Beatty just laughed. They even threatened him with rough treatment and hauled him to Berlin several times. But your man refused to play their game. Good old Beatty. He's a hell of a fine soldier, but million. Now, you better run along. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for everything. Don't mention it. I'll send a sergeant along with you. No, Sergeant. No, nope, just around the corner. Hi! Hi! <laughs> well, those Russians sure are friendly, huh? <laughs> Hello! You said it, boy, oh boy. Well, we're coming in now, Mr. Pavilion. Isn't that the camp? Yeah, it looks like it. Just drive through the wire gate ahead. Right. Hey, those are Yanks and Tommies. Look. Uh, this is it, all right. Pull up here, Sergeant. Yes. Hey, come on. Yes, hey. Hi, Mac. Hi. Hello. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Just a minute, fellas. Just a minute. Now, look, we can't take all of you back in this jeep. It won't hold 10,000 men. <laughs> but we promise you that other Yanks will be here soon to see that you get back to our line. Just a minute, boys. Whoa, whoa. Look, I had orders to drive Bob Vermillion to the United Press here to pick up his pal, Edward Beatty. Any of you boys know him? Oh, thanks, boys. Thanks. Now, if you'll just push over and let Mr. Vermillion get through. Thanks. Come on, Vermillion. Yeah, okay. Oh, dear, it's good to see something. Bob Vermillion! Ed Beatty! Oh, man, am I glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad I got here. Boy, we'd almost given you up. You don't have to yet, man, but I'm glad to see you. I've waited a hell of a long time. My 
My words of greeting to Edward Beatty brought him back to the English-speaking world for the first time since the Germans captured him in France last autumn. In his own words, I've covered many wars, and this was the greatest of them all. Words cannot express my joy at being back, but even greater is the joy that the Nazi yoke has been lifted from the world. Edward Beatty, Jr. and Robert Vermillion, United Press War Correspondents are braving gunfire and hardships, death and capture to bring you eyewitness accounts from every battlefront. We will bring you another thrilling story of these soldiers of the press soup. Be sure to listen. And remember, listen to United Press News on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.